Thank you. We are live. Hi. Uh, good morning and good afternoon to all the participants. Thanks, uh, Yong, for the, the for the pass over. Okay. Today is one more uh, the our routine session to discuss about I mean the um, the culture and technology. So it is related to one of our uh, portfolio software monetization and how we, uh, I mean, found this uh, issue and we would like to share, I mean, with all the uh, software vendors, you know, in the case that you may want to implement uh, SLM tool, the software licensing and manage monetization tool uh, in your company. And what is the ch challenges that you may be facing in the respective country with different culture? So I'm Joe uh, from Matrix Invent. So we are the regional partner of uh, Tala Sentinel, I mean, uh, in the whole uh, ASEAN and also uh, Australia, New Zealand. And we are actually um, uh, helping, I mean, uh, across to not just only sub the, the support, but also pre-sales consulting and helping uh, ISV to, to explore what we can do further, I mean, to help them to increase the revenue and, and adoption level in the region. So, okay, the first thing is that, I mean, the, the, the key thing we always want to mention is that why software monetization is because 75% uh, of the customers that we have actually responded the reason they want to adopt, I mean, to use the software monetization tools, SLM tools, is because they want to make more money. Okay, I mean, uh, being said so, because they can uh, license differently for their product to uh, tag to different market segment, then they're actually able to sell more. This is one of the key things. So what is software monetization? I will just recap a few things so that we keep on uh, trying to build the awareness in the market. So everything is going to be software in the future, no matter uh, now or even in the future, you will see more and more things going to software. Either you're a software company, you're a healthcare company, you're a robotics company, you are uh, construction companies, you know, doing uh, automation, IoT to build construction, build buildings. You are supply chain, smart factory, uh, telco, everything is going to be software. And uh, when it is going to be software, all these are involving codings. And codings is a kind of intellectual properties uh, that belong to a company. Because when you want to sell your software as a service, you know, or maybe your software uh, as a value to your end customer. So basically, these are the key knowledge algorithms, how you're going to solve a particular problem using a software. That's supposed to be a very huge uh, intellectual property uh, asset for uh, any company. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, that's why, I mean, with that, how do you actually be able to enhance your software to really make sure to target into different market segment, different uh, 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 horizontal and vertical line in the industry to really boost your revenue. That become a very important thing. It's a continued process. Uh, you're talking about not just only today or tomorrow. It's some, something to be all the time because it's going to be uh, embedded as a business strategy in all company in the future. Okay. So while different business model like perpetual time usage. So there I will explain later in a while. We'll talk about why, how do you achieve that by really selling more? If you've got various business model to to really monetize your software okay and uh, the important is well, without protecting your intellectual property while encryption and obfuscation so then if anyone steal your software or maybe they got a software to reverse engineer your software basically they got all the secret that you have so that's what we call the software monetization to make more money at the same time to protect your software and that is a key thing that you need to achieve before you go to the market. So driving factor is very important. I mean, uh, the first thing is the, the software spending skyrocketing. Uh, uh, Liu have a research talking about 202 is 483. And I just saw a Gartner report talking about yesterday that, I mean, the whole um, uh, global spending of software uh, can reach about 550 billion in a year. So there's a driving crazy factors of what is software in the market today. Then you got the growth of uh, new emerging technology, IoT, IOT, all the sensors are getting much more intelligent, remote, extensive, and cheaper to be able to available to be put onto a machine, a me mechanical machine we call megatronics today, and like a robots. And eventually, you got virtual reality, AI, big data, all stream of technology are coming very hugely. I think we are getting a point that to to have see exponential grow again when we see something like a CD in the two decades ago. So things are moving very aggressive. And all these things are software, okay? So yeah, it is a uh, huge driving factors. I mean, in terms of uh, helping 
um, your, your company to extend the business revenue. But sometimes we talk about also when you have this software launched to your marketplace, and many times you've got some extensive software piracy to, to copy your software, to sell or to reuse. And um, that's one of the, the very interesting points that we always get from our customers is that the un, in, uh, unauthorized usage basically can be unintentional. Meaning that, you know, you sell to our customers, if you do not protect the license properly by just being a project or just send over the whole things to them, sometimes you just only sell them uh, 10 pieces of license. They may duplicate and use it until 20. And not saying that they don't have the money to pay you, but, but because um, sometimes if you do not have a good control on yourself, you actually um, have licked your own revenue because of unintentional use. The customer willing to pay you, but just that they, they just may not even know if you do not have a proper tools to control. And that this give all rise to the software monetization tools. Okay, just to name a few, but this is one of the key main factors. I, I can foresee it's going to grow further until 2025 at least. So what is a software monetization tools? To achieve that, you need a tools called, uh, you need a tools, you know, to achieve, to help to achieve the, the software monetization concept. So a tool basically we are talking about when you have a software, you go through a process and you come out, it is protected and entitled with a license. Okay, that's, that's the, the meaning of a tool. How can you transform something you go inside? Okay, so it provides encryption, authentication to your IP. You know, it provides various licensing model. So you do um, integration in the in the case that you got uh, you want to be a much more integrated environment in a short uh, uh, related uh, use case would be like Microsoft three six five. You can you can subscribe from a payment from the internet. And you can start to use it. You've got a license that you want. There's no one involved. It's purely automated. And then you, you can actually talk about all the, the today's, you know, when you have this software to be launched, you know, you are taking care of the platforms like iOS, Mac, Windows, you know, Linux, embedded software. There's so many things in the marketplace that you also need to extend your software to cover all this operating system environment. And you, you got to do it as well because your licensing need to closely work in different OS platform. That's something that uh, a key challenge for many software vendors. Yeah. And then that's why you can see it's a growing segment of this, what we call the software monetization tools in a double digit consistently. We will keep going. We will see that, I mean, beyond a decade, you know, and the biggest, I mean, like the, the, the decision to the challenge is always homegrown and commercial because all company can start software monetization concept and a tool from the begin beginning. Because when you write a software, it's very natural. You start to build a software. I mean, two by uh, the the SM two by yourself, and then eventually, you are moving into a situation that is too aggressive. When you grow too much, until a situation you got no choice. Because why? Uh, uh, in terms of comparing cost, effort, and time to the market, you should definitely look into a commercial software monetization tools by then. Yeah. So make it become a uh, be part of strategy today. We talk about selling more. We're talking about uh, recover more uh, liquid revenue. We're talking about even how to be much more even uh, efficient in your operation. That's the key thing people are competing today. No matter you're in manufacturing supply chain or you're in software supply chain or you're in a consulting supply chain, everything is trying to be streamlining the process to become much more efficient so that you can do more and you can do better. The, the key objective of that. Yeah. So licensing model, we have a lot. I mean, the license model that in, 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 the, in the concept of some monetization, you got package, you know, you got perpetual, you got feature. I won't go too detailed in this because today we just do a recap, you know. We do processor, we do subscription, we do network, we do UT per usage and KPI. I, uh, in a, just a short example to talk about how it helped you to drive more revenue. Make an example, we do have a, um, a, a customer software vendors to talk about a Joe. I do have these systems, you know, I mean, to be uh, marketing to the market. However, I got some customers, sometimes can be very seasonal. Seasonal mean that, I mean, they only operate three months in a year. Can I build them in a three months basis or by usage basis? If you do not have that, they wouldn't pay me and then they would rather don't use it. So if I have that, I can have them as a customer, but without impacting my existing customer base. So that is why, I mean, there's something that, you know, if you've got an extra licensing module to be able to be offered to the market easily and you are able to capture and increase the business revenue even more. Okay, that's the, it's a 
the, the, the good question will be sometimes people will ask, you know, I mean, why can't I do that myself? That's always becoming a key challenge of why buy comparing buy and build your own self. It is always the key thing that all uh, I would say, I mean, the, the key issue of uh, to decide whether you should invest or to use your own resource to do it. Okay. Key usefulness, agility to do the package pricing without any programming. You don't do, have to do any programming change, coding change. You know, you can start to package the, the, the licensing model based on what the market needs to start in, improve the revenue from there. And you can uh, be more efficient, how to really look into the process of what you currently have in this entitlement process. And um, very short one just to share again is that this is actually becoming a very routine process in many organizations. However, today, because it is very initial stage in this region, and many companies still have a very basic process. And when they may be already complicated, but they're not aware, and they don't sit down to look back, you know, hey, I got this process actually very important. How can I streamline to make myself much more uh, lightweight, effective, and also cost-saving, but most important, to improve the entire process without with the best affordable cost. So this is something that's already marked in the in the in place and you will see it's more and more in the future that you will discover process becoming one of the key things in this segment of software monetization. And eventually of course it's IP protection uh, without protecting your codes, without able to 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 cover all the, the algorithms that you have basically you are putting the goal on uh, just on in the street you know and, and tell people that you are charging them by building but easily people can steal your go go bar. So that's, I, I, I think, the in short, what we can refer as. Comparing buy and build, I mean, that's why, I mean, the, when you adopt the use of uh, this SLM tool, in a way, a significant cost in uh, uh, a business improvement, improvement that we have done in many customers. And this is a mean that we talk about into uh, many customers. They talk about when the first year, when I deployed, I mean, the solution, second year and third year, what can I do? New licensing model, you know, I mean, uh, increase from software compliance, the lake revenue, improve on customer experience, people buy more, you know, to to introduce even new market, uh, new software packaging with a better time to the market. And then uh, revenue from increase of maintenance, you know. So so these are the key things that you start to see the improvement of a chart that we, see, we did a report uh, of the mean that you can see why, why the adoption of SLM2 is very important. And this is the cost impact in a way to compare if you buy and build is because when you do something that yourself, it's not saying you can't do it, but you got to get a lot of engineers to, 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 to be involved in doing, uh, developing the licensing model, uh, how the engineering department need to make sure that all these things must be securely protect. And how do you actually become uh, uh, less uh, uh, less work, you know, from people in your process to make sure become the license generation to reduce the cost of license generation, reduce the cost of licensing renewal support, and become even much more easy by trial, download, distributing. You can automate the whole process, and you can see so you know with the deployment again with all this kind of like um I mean like um uh SLM solution from the market uh, from our case is Tala Sentinel. Then you can see a drastically drop of cost, you know in terms of cost impact. And the key juice today we talk about is what's culture. Uh, um, we try to keep it short, I mean, what's culture? Because culture, uh, we have some, we've done some literature research review, I mean, in the market by Hofstadt, you know, we talk about culture. It's like a set of softening uh, of the mind. It's something that when you, when you, when the person built, you know, in across the time, uh, when they grow from, from a kids, you know, until 20 plus, 30 plus, you know, to be stepping into the society, they have been receiving a lot of uh, inputs, you know, education, family uh, backgrounds, you know, I mean, like uh, influences. So these are all, you know, slowly programmed into their mind. That's why we call it the culture software of the mind. In a way, it's a collective mental programming that differentiate in between people. That's why uh, you may have your own character, which is the very nature of a character when how you're born uh, in a way. But this, this piece of cultural software also take a very crucial part in changing a person handling something. So what is the suspect of that? Well, why, why, why lead to we want to talk about the culture even when we are in a software monetization uh, 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 industry? We talk about software licensing and monetization tools because 
when we talk about um, sales revenue, uh, again, this is a, just a, a key that uh, data that we have been uh, masked in a way. It's not the actual revenue, but it's the same trend that you can look into it. Okay, we talk about the, the revenue in uh, USD in different countries are vastly different. When you look into uh, Malaysia, you know you got ten thousand. Singapore, you got fifty thousand. Uh, Australia and New Zealand, you got two hundred thousand. And Indonesia, you got five thousand. And Thailand, you got three thousand. Even the selling cycles are a bit different, you know, from 12 months, 6 months, 3 months, 12 months, 9 months. And indeed, we also see the same trend that in different other countries of different parts of Asia when we discuss with different distributors. So that is something that why we keep on asking a question. What happened to this? Is it because of the country without a lot of IP development? Is, be, is it because of the country is developed and developing? Is it due to the, the cost issue or whatever? And can it be even other issue? And we kind of like find one of the influential factor maybe is uh, culture that we want to share today okay so from panels and uh, hamilton said talking about illustrate the culture as a manner of a group of people who solve problem and reconcile dilemma basically is that uh, you have a people from uh, this culture a from culture p from culture c uh, we call talk about national culture you know like malaysia indonesia Thailand or Australia or maybe even Singapore to solve certain things to see certain things is actually uh, completely can be completely different and how to effectively manage a particular technology adoption become one of the key question and key interesting situation because we 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 talk about so many technology in the market you like it or not it is going to come software of, uh, of your mind I mean uh, software is going to be everything is everything is coming so you, you, you have to deploy the technology to, in order to stay competitive and, and, and be much more uh, like uh, uh, in the industry. However, the adoption become a key issue, whether you are able to use it, will, will there be any rejection? Will it be easy to adopt? How do you maximize the use? That's become a key question. It can be also as simple as to describe you know, how people interpret events around them differently. Very, very, very uh, strange thing that, um, that uh, you we may need to really see if you want to adopt a particular tools in your organization, if you are in certain countries. Again, we have not come up with a concrete list of some of our key findings that we want to share. Uh, that's interesting, yeah. So if, uh, you know, what, what like Roger said, one of the key adoption manager, uh, uh, a researcher saying that, you know, organization characteristic influence organization innovation. If an organization has a character and the organization characters can influence the organization innovation and that says so if if the organization is within a national that can be another level of influence that drive a different manners of seeing things and different things to implement across an organization okay so that's why they talk about i mean it is a national social context not just only talk about individual organization you can change you can have a very different individual organization culture but the first context will be always the national social context, which you have a different culture from different country for a very long time. And again, like, you know, I mean, like um, people, uh, if you work long enough as a, a, a global uh, 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 stuff, you know, I mean, global uh, guy, you should see that, you know, the, the difference between uh, uh, Japanese who work differently in their organization compared to people who are also, you know, I mean, uh, uh, like, um, for example, the work in the US, uh, from the Europe, from the ASEAN, you may see a complete different organization culture. So how, how does it come about it is actually, I, we actually quite adopt, I mean, the, the model of uh, research by Hofstadt, you know, in a way, to talk about uh, a few key elements that uh, from her, his early research. We talk about power distance. We talk about individualism uh, versus collective, uh, collectivism. We talk about uh, femininity versus masculinity. We talk about uncertainty avoidance. Yeah. So power distance is more until I talk about you know uh, how how high power distance is between the top and the medium and the bottom. In short, you're talking about uh, uh, in between is the country culture that all power central at the top of the people, or is actually shortened. It's not to say that you don't have a top or the bottom. You still have a different level of power distance in every country, for sure. But the index of it, is it how far from it? 
So we will be in the in the in the in the sense of like adopting SLM tools, you know, in the organization. If let's say you're proposing to your inner organization, if you are in a high power distant country, will it be a problem when you want to get this approved? You need to get the adoption or the approval straight all the way to the owner for the MD. Even you are 500 or 300 uh, uh, company size I mean, uh, organization. In the low power distance, the power has been drastically empowered. And it is a, a, like a, I would say, I mean, the culture that people will do well in their respective function. And these people can make a decision and justify why they want to use this SLM tool in their organization. So power distance refer to as how much involvement of a particular, I mean, like um, top executive and how much power on top of them to decide on certain things that greatly affect the adoption of a, an, a technology in an organization, no matter its budget, no matter it's uh, the ways of innovation, no matter the way of uh, adoption of a new technology, that become a key um, uh, issue from, from, from our point of view. Individualism and collectivism is, uh, is, is again, is also we can see a very, very uh, big difference in the market from what we cover in the region. We talk about certain uh, ASEAN country, you know, I mean, uh, make, make an example like Japan, Malaysia, Indonesia. So the organization operate like a family base in a way. So people are very close to each other. And then uh, the group has been always protecting each group. That can be in a, a company basis. It can be also in a department basis. So information becoming very important and they didn't like to share because why? I need to protect as a group. This is a group interest. And if there is uh, anything easy to be shared by other people, especially information today, then I mean, they have uh, reduced their control in an organization and that may be impacting to their group benefits and group people and, and, and the objective of the group, no matter what kind of agenda behind. So in terms of individualism, then that is meaning meaning that I mean uh, you will see much more like in the Western society and the capitalist market, if someone is doing well, people will accept that and let them grow. No, well, well, we can do that because eventually you want to see uh, the the growth of a big picture together. That's your 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 key thing. How you can work well on that, but in, in collectivism, it is talking about the whole company, whether you like it or not. So that's why when you talk about adoption of SLM. We found that uh, the theory of this uh, particular uh, cultural index is very interesting also because when we see some country with uh, high individualism, the adoption of technology becomes easier because they can bring a solution to be a champion and speak to all and think uh, in the sovereignization uh, department should have this to grow, okay? Should have this information to be shared and should be integrated to the other department. But whereas in a very high a uh, low index of individualism or high collectivism country. To do sovereign monetization SLM may be reducing some people's power and job and to reducing some people's process and also forcing some people to be integrated to, to your platform. And that really becoming uh, sometimes a very huge receptive and reluctance thing that you need to do. So um, I'm so sorry that I, I, I got some construction there. So that, that become a very huge issue that we, we need to look into individualism and collectivism. And we have other intents to talk about femininity in masculinity. And this is talking about how uh, an organization or the national social context, if a man has been a better power than a, a, a woman, and if a woman having a better power than a man, will a solution in more executive in that level can influence adoption? That is also a key thing that uh, uh, in the dimension of the culture we lead. But however, I think um, how? Uh, so sorry, but I got to pause a while from the. That. I think I have not, not much slide to continue. I think I will just finish. But we do not go into this femininity and masculinity. The key reason is because it is uh, uh, also done by many researchers before. There is not really an impact on influencing technology. Okay. However, uh, power distance to, to compare with power distance, uh, individualism and collectivism, and uncertainty avoidance. Where the last one is referring to in a culture where they are much more, you know, I mean, able to adopt a new technology. I mean, I mean to take risks towards the business. Okay. So some country can take risks. Some country cannot take risks. And all these few intacts, you know, like power distance. 
uh, individualism and uncertainty or avoidance collectively to become one of the key things that we found has a very huge influence in adopting the SIM2 in the market. So the one that we just mentioned, the conflicts we try to, uh, uh, to, to, to ignore because we do not want to, want to spend time to talk about femininity and masculinity, which many researchers found that there's no, no influence in that particular area. But we, the, the last slide we want to share is a very interesting slide. You know, In the country that we become a, a distributor to cover, like Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, Thailand, Australia, New Zealand. So that, that three indices, you know, actually you can see the, the link here. You can always to go to the link and look into it. It's uh, publicly available for the link. And, and the research researcher office actually stated that, you know, national index, if these three index, you know, I mean, like if I, they redone research, like power distance, individualism, and uncertain avoidance. Power distance is very high in Malaysia. And power distance very uh, lower in Singapore, lower in Indonesia, Thailand, and then eventually Australia and New Zealand. That is why, meaning that when you want to people to adopt an SLM tool, be it you want to sell to an organization or be it you want to actually propose it internally to your organization. So in Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, you may need a very, or even Thailand, you may need a very huge sponsors from the sea levels to understand the concept because why they will have the ultimate power to decide to go and not go okay in compared to a lower power distant country like australia new zealand you have a pretty good chance if you propose in this country and the middle line management or even the the, the product manager will have the power to decide and say yes i want to go ahead with that solution so a very key index that you can see, if the power index is high, no matter what, everything's central at the top. So you're going to be top down rather than bottoms up. So whenever you make it into a lower power distant country, things can be bottom up, you know, I mean, without even top down. And that is a very key finding that we, we, we want to share uh, after years of uh, uh, studies that we have in, the, in, in, in this area and, and become a distributor in this region as well, yeah. And then we have individualism. We talk about individualism. So Malaysia individualism is 26, you know, uh, Singapore is 2014. And in contrast to Australia and New Zealand, 90 and 79, that's stated meaning that Australia and New Zealand have a very high individualism index compared to ASEAN have a very low individualism in. That means that the collectivism is higher the index. That means the group orientation of in Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, and Thailand are very huge. Operate like a family, family and very protective and not easy to share information. So again, when you talk about adoption of technology, you know, to propose SLM in this case, you know, to, to the management. So you have to have a very much different angles to propose to look into even the, the sensitivity and also to the benefits, you know, of different departments, different uh, people in the group, and what is the, the impact and the influence to them in the daily working process. We, we will help them, we will eliminate them, we will reducing their power or can be retrained for other things. So that become another key thing that to talk about individualism. But in contrast to Australia and New Zealand, that is not an issue. Because why? The, the, the key thing is that, I mean, um, um, there is not much impact in, in, in talking about information sharing is, a, is like a, a norm in their organization. So there's nothing that you can stop with this uh, like a, a barrier to adopt a technology. So that is why you see the, the, the sales cycle and the sales, if someone who needs a solution or you want to propose internally in your organization to adopt SLM tool. So Australia and New, uh, and New Zealand do not have the group problems and the power distance problem. Whereas in ASEAN, we have to do something to more to put more emphasis on the top down, C level executive uh, sponsors, and also the group orientation and the group concern if the, the, the technology to be adopted. Okay, it's not to tell me any physical uh, uh, or, or the, the, the tangible response, but more into we're talking about what kind of like uh, social or maybe even group impact for the particular organization. But of course, the last one will be the uncertain avoidance. Again, you see a very interesting data. So sometimes then you will ask also, you know, I mean, in a way, so if that is much so high in terms of uh, technology, uh, technology um, uh, index, you know, uh, power distance and, and, and group power, uh, index in ASEAN country, but how about uncertainty avoidance? Whereas in Malaysia, 
Singapore, Indonesia in, in here is a bit much more different from Thailand, Australia, and New Zealand. New Zealand and Australia is even higher. So they, this is, uh, you know, mean to talk about when you talk about um, proposing a technology. If I want to use technology A, will we really make my system down? Will we make my system need to be really totally uh, stopped for three minutes, or three hours to five hours? So what will happen? Will we increase the frequency of the support and my customer are not, not, not happy with it? The tolerance of the downtimes are much, 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 much lower. That we, we relate, I mean, I would say the uncertainty avoidance in this in, in this area. But in compared to Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, it's much lower. That means they are able to uh, tolerate. So it's a very funny thing uh, that certain technology, organization technology like SLM, may be very easy to push in Australia and New Zealand due to power distance and, and, and uncertainty. But you may need to also calm all these prospect software vendors from Australia and New Zealand that what is the plan B if something not work out? So the, the focus of discussion and the plan in, in, in Australia and New Zealand will be much more into plan B and plan C if anything goes wrong and what can they roll back. And then that will actually help them to reduce the concern in uncertainty avoidance. Yeah. So whereas I think in Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, we've seen that the, 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 the area of people who look into this, is, uh, especially Malaysia and Singapore, is much more daring to use technology. Daring to change into more things is because the uncertainty avoidance is, uh, you know, basically lower. They can accept that. So this all, I mean, uh, just to share, I mean, I would say for this uh, session, it's a short session. We actually very focused in the talk about, I mean, uh, the differences. Why there is something that we found um, uh, so different in different region. Sometimes uh, uh, the things that work in country A may may not be work in country B. Assist revenue adoption very adopted in country C, but not adopted in country D. And uh, whereas if you look back into these cycles, you know, I mean, the, the revenue we talk about, why in Indonesia, I mean, uh, there's a lot of big, huge market. Is it because of price or is it because of the culture? Something that we need to find out. Why, I mean, some smaller economy in terms of GDP, uh, in terms of uh, uh, maybe... Um, uh, the the software development uh, development uh, usage on the revenue in the country is 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 uh, higher than other country, but the usage of this adoption SRM is lower. So that is can be key reference into way of looking into the cultural factors. Okay, so we do not we are still studying. We do not have a conclusive uh, answer yet, but I think uh, it's good to share to all uh, the software vendor, if you are proposing SLM2 in your organization, so what is the things that you may need to take notes in order to make it much more successful in your internal organization? For the people who sell the software like us, you know, in other or other uh, principal products, so what is the things that we need to also take in care? Yes, it is easy to talk about something to work in US or, or China or, or Europe, you know, or you can uh, replicate to whole world, but that's not the, 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 the fact. So if we can know that, when we found that there's something that we know, especially like power distance, you know, the key level and C level sponsor is super important in Malaysia. So the first meeting, you may even need to get in a principal officer from there rather than uh, to consider it will not happen at all. So even if you're proposing SIM2 in your organization, if you do not get enough endorsement from your uh, the owner of the CEO or the C-level executive, I think it's pretty much wasting time. So in compared to Australia and New Zealand, you have a fair chance to introduce the solution. Whereas individualism and group, I mean like the collectivism we talk about, higher the group uh, index is actually lower the individualism. When it's lower, you need to take care of the group sensitivity in other impact if a new technology is, is to introduce. So maybe perhaps if any job loss, retraining or sensitivity or power has been reduced, you know, to certain group of people that need to be taken care. So, I mean, uh, indirectly or directly. And, and lastly, will be the uncertainty avoidance. Uh, in low uncertainty avoidance country, people will dare to use technology even aggressive without bothering about the, the, the concern about any, any bad things or plan B, plan C need to be used. And in compared to be high uncertainty avoidance index country like Thailand, Australia, New Zealand, you may need to talk about, you know, I mean, uh, every time you propose a, uh, the, the solution internally or externally, you have to have a very good 
plan B and plan C to good, get all people to be, uh, you know, buying your ideas. Because why? Uh, uh, just simply debt in tax is so high in that country is something that you may want to take in care and see if that really help you to improve your technology uh, adoption uh, uh, in your organization. Okay, thanks. I think that will be my, my sharing today. Very short. I'm so sorry about the, the construction happening in my uh, office. So sorry about that. So if you need like to know more, you can always email me about uh, on my email address. And you can always come to one of the micro sites that we have is called softwaremonetization.com. Uh, that is actually uh, what we be trying to be specialized in this area and to share in many aspects, not just only about software monetization. So in the aspect of what else can be covered in this process of software monetization. So in terms of uh, just like we just share cultural factor and perhaps we will share even more things in the future. So thanks for your time and hope uh, this session will be helpful. Again, sorry for the inconvenience for the construction sound.